let's finish off our study of induction and recursive definitions with a little bit of knowledge of recursive algorithms. So we're going back to pseudocode. So a recursive algorithm is basically an algorithm that solves a problem by reducing it to an instance of the same problem with a smaller input. So it just keeps doing that over and over. So I wrote down an example that should look familiar to you using the Euclidean algorithm that says, hey, if I wanted to find the GCD of 14 and 20, then really what I'm doing is I'm saying, let's take 20 and make it equal to 14 times whatever number plus the remainder, which of course means that mod, right? So mod would be six. And then I can rewrite that as the GCD of the smaller number and whatever the remainder was. So that's equal to the GCD of 14 and six. So now I'm dealing with the same problem, but smaller inputs. And then I repeat that process and I get six and two. And then I say, well, okay, that's equal to the GCD of six and two. And then I do that again and say, okay, that is equal to the GCD of two and zero. And therefore my GCD is two. So we're going to look at the actual pseudocode for that in just a moment, but this is essentially the way a recursive algorithm works. So here's the pseudocode for that. And again, this is for finding the greatest common divisor of two non-negative integers a and b with a less than b. So the pseudocode names the procedure first and the procedure is just GCD. And then all of this stuff in here is describing the A and B that will be inputs. So the GCD of A and B means A and B are two non-negative integers where A is less than B. So I'm just, I have to specify which one of the values is less than because I'm going to deal with them differently when I'm finding my GCD. So I'm going to look at GCD of 14 and 20 like I just did. And based on that, 14 would be A and 20 would be B because A is less than B. The process says if A is zero, then return B. Otherwise, return the GCD of B mod A and A. So what that's saying is, all right, go ahead and do your Euclidean algorithm that said this is the same as um, 20 is equal, I'm gonna change that to a semicolon, 20 is equal to 14 times one plus six. So again, this is that mod, B mod A is six. So it's saying, okay, return GCD of B mod A, which is six, and A, which is 14. So now what just happened? Now the smaller value is a and the larger value is B. And I'm still not here where it says if A equals zero, then return B because A is not zero. So then I have to do it again. Whoops, I'm gonna use colon again. And that one says that 14 is equal to six times two plus two, which means this is equal to the GCD of B mod A, remember B mod A is that remainder, so two and six, which was A. So now two becomes A and six becomes B. And then we know that that means that we can say six is equal to two times three plus zero. And so the return I still can't say I'm done because A is not zero yet. The return is find the GCD of zero and two. And now we have this step where it says, okay, guess what? A is zero, which we got, A now is zero. Then the return is B and the answer is two. So that is how that algorithm works. Remember the green is just for people, not for computers. And the green just says, hey, the output is the GCD of A and B. But that is how this procedure would work with pseudocode. So it's pretty straightforward. You just have to remember that this is going to keep happening and happening and happening until you get to that end stage that says A is zero. So let's look at one now for n factorial. n factorial, obviously we take the whatever the value is times each value all the way down to one. 
So the procedure, again, we're just going to call it factorial, and we're taking the factorial of n, and n is just going to be a non-negative integer, again, given to me up here. Then it's saying if n is equal to 0, then return 1, because 0 factorial is 1. Otherwise, return n times the factorial of n minus 1. So here's what that means. Let's say I'm starting with n equals 4. So really I'm saying I want to find 4 factorial. And how am I going to compute that? Well, it says if n is 0, return 1. n is not 0, n is 4. So otherwise, return n times factorial of 1 less. So my return here is going to be 4 times 3 factorial. Then it says, if n is 0, return 1. I'm still not there because now n is 3. And so if n is 3, then I'm going to return n times the factorial of n minus 1. So I'm going to get um, the 4 that I already had, and then 3 factorial turns into 3 times 2 factorial. And of course, that's now n is going to be 2 for my next step. So for my next step, I'm getting the 4 and the 3 and the 2 and the 1 factorial. And then my next step is going to be to take 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 times 0 factorial. Now what's 0 factorial? Again, now I've made it. If n equals 2, then I'm returning the value of 1. So really this is just telling the computer to take 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 and then of course times 1 again really doesn't matter. So that would be how the algorithm works. Let's look at one more algorithm. This says give a recursive algorithm for computing a to the n, where a is a non-zero real number and n is a non-negative integer. So again, my procedure is just a power. I'm taking some number to a power. And the process says to, if n is zero, then return one, because that would mean it's some number to the zero power, which is always one. Otherwise, we're going to return a times the power of a comma n minus 1. So what exactly does that mean? Let's say I've got 5 to the fourth. So what does this algorithm tell me to do? Well, n in this case is 4, right? Because that's the power. And that says, okay, 5 to the fourth can be written as a times 5 to the 4 minus 1, which is 3. Well, now I have n is 3. So how can I write that? I can write that as 5 times, and then the 5 to the third is going to be written as 5 times 5 squared. And then the next time it's going to be written as 5 times 5, and then 5 squared is written as 5 times 5 to the first. And then the next time it's going to be written as 5 times 5 times 5, and then 5 times 5 to the 0. And now n is 0, so I'm just returning 1. So this is 5 times 5 times 5 times 5, and then times 1, which doesn't really matter. And the output is a to the n, and in this case, notice, it is 5 to the fourth. So let's just look at one proof using mathematical induction. We're going to prove the algorithm correct, which computes a to the n where a is a non-zero real number and n is a non-negative integer. That's the algorithm we just looked at, so I didn't recopy it for you. But again, the basis step says, hey, a to the zero equals one for every non-zero real number, and again, the power of a and zero, a, which means a to the zero, equals one. And that is true, and therefore the basis step is proved. The inductive step says, assume that the power of a k is equal to a to the k. So assume that is true. I need to now show that the power of a and k plus 1 is essentially equal to a to the k plus 1. So I'm going to take the power of a, I'm sorry, I'm going to take a times the power of a k because I can do that, right? Then that's a times a to the k, using my inductive hypothesis, 
and I know that I'm essentially just going to add 1 and k together to get a to the k plus 1, and so therefore I have proved the algorithm correct. Coming up next, we are going to completely shift our focus. We are now going to take a look at some probability and the number of ways that something can occur, a lot of times known as combinatorics. Um, we're going to call this section counting rules.